Well, the Boston Celtics NBA season is right around the corner. I want to see if we can get to 40,000 subscribers. We gain so many people along the way. Boston Celtics journey to win the NBA championship. As of right now, we're at 39,256 subs. We gain 4,600 over this offseason alone, but we are so close to Luke Cornett, the special number 40. So can we do it for Luke Cornett and get to his number? Well, it starts with you guys. Hit that sub button for me. We're not going to talk about Luke Cornett. We're actually going to talk about Peyton Pritchard on today's episode. Welcome into Celtics Today by Chat Sports. I'm your host, Allie Barefoot, and I think PP is very underrated, and that sounds wild, I know. But just for context, PP is Peyton Pritchard. Now we can continue with the video. So I do think that Peyton Pritchard is a vital aspect of the Boston Celtics bench, and I do think that our starting five is one of the best starting five that you can possibly create in the NBA. But... They have to take a break. I wouldn't want anybody else coming off the bench except for Peyton Pritchard. But is he good enough to win the sixth man of the year? Well, I'm going to break down three reasons why I think Pritchard can win this award this season. Let's go ahead and just refresh your memory here. Here are the qualifications to actually be the NBA's sixth man of the year. The NBA has given out this award since the 1982 season, and a player must come off the bench in more games than he starts to be eligible for the award. So that's how Peyton Pritchard can win this award. Number one. He actually has to be the sixth man for the Boston Celtics. We saw that last year. Obviously, he was in the first rotation coming off the bench in the first quarter. Would normally go in with his pal Sam Hauser. You'd allow Jalen Brown to come off along with Derek White. You'd keep Drew Holiday, Jay Jason Tatum, and Al Horford on the court while Pritchard got his first minutes. But in the past four seasons, we know that this has kind of been the role that Peyton Pritchard has had all along playing for the Celtics. He has only started a career-high five games in his career. So clearly, out of the 82 games he played last year, every single game, he obviously would qualify in each of these four years to win this very extremely hard award to win in the NBA. So, number one, you can check that one off the list because I do not think, pending any injuries, Peyton Pritchard would ever start more games than he would coming off the bench. I think that Joe Mazzulla has completely crafted a beautiful rotation in substitutions to allow Peyton Pritchard to be able to have as many minutes that he needs because he did really equip his defensive skills more so towards the middle half of the season. Earlier last year, I thought he was very much just a shooting heavy guard, but he he decided he wanted to add a little bit of defense to his game, so now I think he's a more well-rounded player, which is why I think he's going to earn more minutes. But I have a question for you guys before we keep going with this. Is Number one, am I just talking out of my ass? Or do you guys think Peyton Pritchard could actually win the Sixth Man of the Year award? If you do, type Y for yes, type N for no. You're going to get hit with a YouTube ad break right here. So go on ahead. Feel free to comment down below. This will be the pinned comment. So you'll see it right there when you scroll down. Tell me how you feel and just sit through this ad break real quick. All right, so knowing that 8 out of 10 of the last six Man of the Year award winners were guards. You got a couple, you got one center in there, you got one power forward in there, but m mostly when you see NBA voters voting for MVP, six Man, DPOI, a lot of them really like to find their, their niche, right? Well, for six Man of the Year, they like shooting heavy guards and we know that that is what Peyton Pritchard has done not just last season but pretty much his entire career remember how I mentioned that he added on more to his bag in this last season well he decided he wanted to be more than just a shooting guard he wanted to add defense he wanted to be a good two-way player but let's talk about the minutes that he plays because yes while he may while they may look to shooting heavy guards he also needs to play enough for people to actually recognize that he's making a difference on the court and the last 5 winners their minutes per game were all 24 25 minutes and above those aren't really Peyton Pritchard numbers those are really a team that doesn't that has a good starting five, but obviously not as good as the Boston Celtics. Obviously, Nas Reed won it last year. Malcolm Brogdon actually won it with the Boston Celtics two years ago, as that rotation was very fluid. Peyton Pritchard just recently, in his fourth year in the NBA, averaged his career high minutes per game, which was 22.3. 
I don't think that's bad at all if he was trying to win this award or if he wanted to be qualified for this award. But as you just saw, the minutes per game really does matter here. And that's where it takes me to how to win this award number two. Pritchard is going to have to earn more minutes. And that's a very tough thing to do on the Boston Celtics who have one of the best rosters in the NBA. Obviously, you're not going to play more than the starting five. And that even goes a little bit into the bench without Horford or Chris Dass, Porzingis, or maybe Luke Cornett, who may have to play because Horford and Porzingis are out that game. We are thankfully very equipped with great guards. So Peyton Pritchard is kind of on the end of his seat there, waiting for Joe Missoula to say, hey man, you're going to go in just to give these guys a break. So the odds to win the sixth man of the year. Obviously, it doesn't fall in any Boston Celtics' favor. And honestly, that might be a good thing because think about it. The Boston Celtics are picked to win the NBA championship. They're picked to have not one but two possible players and MVP talks in Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown. So if I had to pick a category where I'm glad no Celtics are in, it'd probably be sixth man of the year. But Malik Monk with the Sacramento Kings, Nas Reed won it last year, Norman Powell, Jordan Clarkson, they actually won it a few years ago, and then Karis LeVert are all currently in the running to win the Sixth Man of the Year award for this upcoming season. So Peyton Pritchard isn't even on anybody's radar, which is going to make it even that much harder to do this next thing that I'm about to talk to you guys about. But I do have one question before we hop into that. What does Peyton Pritchard need to do to win the sixth man of the year. Do you think that he really needs to start taking more shots, making more shots? Do you think he needs to get better with his three-point percentage or maybe his mid-range jumper? Is there something that can make Pritchard stand out among the other six mans in this NBA league? It's going to be tough because as you guys can see, all of those teams I just mentioned, they're definitely playoff contenders, but championship contenders? It might be a little bit tough. So let me go on ahead and break that down in just one moment. But first, let me tell you guys about our sponsor here on Celtics Day by Chat Sports. I'm talking to you guys about Prize Picks, the number one daily fantasy sports app in America. I'm playing it. Everybody here at Chat Sports is playing it. And here's why you guys should too. Number one, it is so stinking easy to play. All you have got to do is pick between two to six players and just pick more or less on a player's projected stats, and you can win up to 100 times your money on prize picks with as little as four correct picks. Not to mention, prize picks is the only real money daily fantasy platform with an injury insurance policy. So your lineups stay in play even if one of your players gets injured. If your player leaves the first half and doesn't return, prize picks keeps your lineup live. Look at them. They're always looking out for you. And over 10 million users that's why you guys should sign up today. So if you want to go ahead and get started and test your skills at several different sports categories on this app, well, download the app today and use code CLNS to get $50 instantly after you play your first $5 lineup. One more time, download the app today. Use code CLNS to get $50 instantly when you play your first $5 lineup. You don't even need to win to earn that $50. Prize picks run your game. The third way Peyton Pritchard could possibly win the NBA Sixth Man of the Year award is he's going to have to stand out among other Celtics superstars. So when you look at the starting lineup, obviously from Tatum to Derek White, Drew Holiday, Brown, Porzingis, Horford, there are a lot of big names there. And Peyton Pritchard, when he comes in, he needs to start, honestly, producing enough minutes and enough points and enough plus-minus stats to be able to, for any average fan, look at the box score and say, damn, Peyton Pritchard went off. And it doesn't need to be one game a month. It needs to be consistent. And one thing that I have noticed that Pritchard has done to kind of make himself stand out, even if it means just absolutely chucking up a ball from anywhere on the court, is he's really learned to nail his half-court shots. That'll get you some looks, absolutely. Why? They're going to go to that box score. They're going to see what your stat line looked like, not to mention you also made it a little bit on the personality side when you just drain this half-court shot, especially when you come in in Game 5 of the NBA Finals, and this is the only shot you took, and this is the only shot you made, was way past half-court at the halftime 
buzzer. So he's proven that he can be clutch in different scenarios that maybe a Tatum or, or a Brown may not be as clutch in. But I will be honest, I just don't know if there's going to be enough time in a basketball game for Peyton Pritchard to have these big moments. All of those big moments are going to lie on the big players. So when you are down and when you are trying to come back, maybe it's late in the fourth quarter, you're not going to see Peyton Pritchard unless something happens and either he becomes better than Jason Tatum or somebody got hurt. And we really don't want either of those things to happen. So the opportunities need to create themselves, but Peyton Pritchard also needs to step up when that moment is available because we also have to look at the Boston Celtics bench as a whole it's not the best bench out there and how could it be how can you have the best bench in the NBA and the best starting five it's probably not going to happen in fact they had one of the worst benches in terms of scoring last season as they ranked 27th well that's also because they didn't have to play as much so it kind of goes hand in hand with all three things that Peyton Pritchard needs to do to win the sixth man of the year award but overall Peyton Pritchard doesn't give a shit he really doesn't. This is just me talking ball, getting ready for the regular season, and I do have very high hopes for almost every single individual player on this team, whether it's going to be Derek White getting his first All-Star nod, whether it's going to be Drew Holiday winning Defensive Player of the Year, whether it's PP winning Sixth Man of the Year. He's got my vote because obviously I'm a Boston Celtics fan, so I'm a little biased, but I do think this is an award that Pritchard could absolutely win, and we could talk about this closer to May. So if you guys want to keep talking ball, all you guys have got to do is follow me on Twitter at AR Barefoot. And as always, go on ahead and do one thing for me, and that's hit that sub button on Celtics Today by Chat Sports.